Welcome back. Where is Jabez Spann? The 14-year-old has been missing since Labor Day. He disappeared shortly after a candlelight vigil for Travis Combs, who was found dead near Spann's Newtown home. By all accounts, Jabez is a good kid. He has never been in trouble. He was a football player. But did he witness something? Regardless, it has been more than two months. So again, we ask, where is Jabez Span? If you know, call one of the numbers that you will see on the screen for this entire broadcast. And joining us for more is Jerrica Sutton, a family friend, Wayne Washington, who has tirelessly led the sometimes frustrating effort to search for Jabez, and private investigator Bill Warner, who has been keeping track of the leads that are out there. Bill, I know you can't say exactly what, but Police do have leads that they are tracking down as we speak. Oh, absolutely, sure. I mean, obviously somebody saw something that night back on uh, August 28th when Travis was shot. So, you know, there's, there's n news out there about maybe who did this and who possibly did it and did Jabez possibly saw who shot Travis. And so there's, there is talk. There is talk, but it's been right. two months. Right. Um, Police may believe that they, 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 they know generally what happened, but they certainly do not know what happened to Jabez. No. Not yet, no. Uh, you know, I would imagine that this is, I, you can't even describe um, what family and friends are going through right, right now. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, the Newtown community is a, a, a community. Uh, everybody knows each other. It's a small community, exactly. So, so what... What is the community thinking right now? What is the family and friends thinking? Well, oh, did you want to? Oh, you can go okay, ahead. Okay, well, um, honestly, we don't know what the community is thinking because they're not out there to say what they're thinking. Um, so I know the family is very upset and hurt, and I will be too if my 14-year-old was just missing. And here are people who have been raised with him, go to church with him, go to school with him, and they're parents are making them step up and say anything. They're not stepping up and saying anything. People who've been with the family throughout the years are not stepping up and saying anything. Churches are not stepping up and helping. So, you know, they're kind of feeling like they've been shunned by the community. Why? Because nobody's helping. Like, there, you know, there are people who come out, and I don't want anybody to ever think that, that when they come out, it's not appreciated, and it's so appreciated. But the ones that have not been there, you know, and when people say it's such a cliche, it can happen to anybody, but it really can happen to anybody. Wayne, um, why do you think more members of, of the community are not stepping forward and calling police? Um, we live in a selfish society right now, um, and I try to tell people that too, um, just like Jerrica just said, um, you know, this can happen to anybody, but our community, the not snitching, the um, that ain't my child's, that, that um, mentality has really f affected our community. And, and it's sad because, you know, we were a, a close community. I grew up here in the um, 70s, in the 80s, and in the 90s. So to see where we are, are, where we are now, it really breaks my heart. It, it, can, is this boiled down to simply that, you know, whoever did this to Jabez um, represents a real danger and they, they fear for their own lives? Oh, absolutely, 100%. There has been a lot of problems starting in May of this year in the Newtown area with some shootings and another guy got shot and killed end of May. He was a big time drug dealer named Trinidad. In June, there was three drive-by shootings in Newtown. It, was, it appeared to me when Trinidad was murdered, or shot and killed, that the vacuum became involved on this drug deals. And there, there was like a, a turf war going on. There was at least three shootings in June. Leads up to me thinking that, you know, Travis was probably involved in the drug trade also, and that somebody got upset that he was on 22nd Street, which would be somebody else's turf, because Travis was living in Arcadia. Right. We are just getting started, and we have only scratched the surface. We are getting warmed up. We'll have more on the search for Jabez Span right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Welcome back. 14-year-old Saras of the teenager Jabez Span has been missing since Labor Day. I'll be absolutely blunt right now. The purpose of tonight's show is to appeal to the public if you know anything. Call the numbers on your screen. And joining us for more is Jerrica Sutton, a family friend, Wayne Washington, who has tirelessly and led the sometimes frustrating effort to search for Jabez, and private investigator Bill Warner, who has been keeping track of the leads in this case uh, all since Labor Day.
Correct. Uh, let me start with you, Wayne. In terms of the searches that you have helped organize, how have you gone ab about these searches? Where have you searched? And under what guidance? Have police or law enforcement told, told you where they would prefer you to, to look? Um, well, when we um, when I first heard about it um, after the hurricane, um, we did a prayer uh, a prayer rally, and then after we did the prayer rally that week following, um, we we started our search. Um, when we started our first search, we looked in and kind of in the um, outskirts and the easements of Sarasota. Um, we um, got a couple leads from people in the community, stuff like that, but nothing solid. But we just wanted to just clear all the areas and make sure everything was checked. But um, fathers with uh, Sarasota PD, um, I do have a partner that's, um, he's a private investigator as well, and he's been helping us out with the search too, um, but uh, no, nothing from the Sarasota PD. How difficult has it been to get members of the community to, to help you do this? And when Adam reported that you're getting some help from St. Petersburg and Orlando, I mean, what's that about? Oh, man, yeah, a lot of people from out of town, um, Fort Myers, um, you, we even, we had just, just folks from the outskirts of Sarasota and Manatee County, and I think people from other areas taking it more serious and care more about um, uh, people in the community than folks in the community do. Um, Why? I, you know that's that's such a, a great question. Um, we uh, we I I plead that on my social media. I always ask folks. Um, I throw it out there, and it's it's just we get such a dead answer. Nobody's respond. Nobody offer to donate. Nobody offer to do anything. But they'll say they'll pray. They'll pray for us during the search. But I tell them we need more than prayer. We need action with your prayer. With your praying, you know, um, it would be cool if every church, um, especially African American church in this community, Manatee and Sarasota, come out one Sunday and just help search. You know, um, the effort is needed. It is definitely needed. Jerrica, I mean, are you getting any feedback? Anybody telling you why the, the community is not doing more than it possibly can do? There's no, it's just silence. You know, me and the aunt went to a church over the weekend and we were literally pushed out of the church. Um, and I, we were shocked. Like, they literally pushed us out the back door of the church. Saying what? Oh, we've been praying, you know, we've been praying since the beginning of this, you know, and we're going to continue to pray. And I say, I understand that, but we need bodies. You know, you don't pray for a job and then sit on the couch. You pray for a job and then go look for a job. We can't pray for Jabez to come home and not go find him. T tell me a little bit about Jabez. Honestly, what's even more sad is that I've met this, this family through the searches. So they have been in this community their whole lives. And there's people who they've known their whole lives that they can't even have stand in for them. That should show what is going on in this community, that I just met them and that my love for them is more genuine right. Bill, than anybody. Yeah. You, you're, you're a professional at this. In, in terms of searches when a young person or anybody for that matter disappears like this, you know, how does this usually go in terms of, of searches done either by law enforcement or members of the community, and, and how generally effective well, is it? Usually it's a combination of law enforcement and the community. Uh, the law enforcement put a call out to come help, look for whoever's missing, and the community responds. And then you have 500, 600 people out there looking around. They also have, they bring in uh, the, the mounted horse people. They come out and they, look, they help look too. Because some of this area they're looking for is, you know, pretty heavily vegetated and it's hard to get through there. So it's very difficult. And the areas that they were looking in, wow, it's tough to get in there. The overgrowth, all the bushes and weeds, very difficult, horrible situation. And, and you know, the, the police have been out there and you saw the sure. FBI has been out there. Sure. What is the FBI doing, uh, you know, separate than what the local police can do? I hope that they're looking at maybe phone calls that night. First of all, when Tra we got to start with Travis, I think. We're going to start with Travis Combs and his, his murder, the unsolved murder. That, uh, that's a key part of this whole investigation. So let's look at phone calls that Travis Combs made and had made to his cell phone that day and night and see who he was talking to. You got, you got to get a name here. The bad guy out there who killed, at least killed Travis, we know that. So we have to find this guy. Call Crime Stoppers, get involved. I mean, you don't have to t give your name, but you got to call it. You got to get a name and get the ball rolling here. 
Wayne, it, does this simply boil down to the fact that we've had a number of shootings and unsolved uh, cases in the Newtown area, and and people are just concerned that if they are they, they snitch, for lack of a better term, that they become a target themselves? They, they tell everything else. Um, they, you know, I just think that people. Um, it to me, my honest opinion is they. If, if it's not their child, they ain't saying nothing, but they tell everything else. If you go on anybody's social media page around here, they know everything that's going on. So with this situation, especially with a child, that should be thrown out there regardless of the fact because um, they, it can be their child tomorrow. That's what I'm like real hurt about because you, if you want to know anything, they know the answers to that. So this kid is 14 years old. It shouldn't be no, well, I'm scared to say anything. You know, there's a $25,000 reward right now. Number one, do, does that, when you're talking about a young child, a 14-year-old kid yes, sir. who's liked by everyone, that shouldn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. but, but does it make a difference in cases like this, Bill? Sure. Absolutely. Rewards always help to at least spark some generation, some leads, possibly. Uh, in this case, it doesn't seem to be working yet. But again, I think we have a big fear factor, like you mentioned, about the shootings unsolved in Newtown. And that's a problem. Uh, we, we have heard that the, the investigation is not just confined to the Sarasota area. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's in basically three or four surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. um, is that just absolutely typical, Bill, that, you know, investigations like this, even though if it happens in one neighborhood in the city, um, you, you're, tra you, you're covering a lot of miles between here and the Tampa Bay area and so forth? As, as time goes by, you have to expand the circle of wh where you're looking. You know, the, there's people in, in, a, in a car picked them up, possibly in a car and took them someplace. You know, you can't just stay here. You have to look elsewhere. But again, I, I, in my opinion, you have to look back at the cell phone activity that day. Jabez, his cell phone activity, Travis's cell phone activity, there's got to be a lead in there somewhere. You know, and is the, the suspicion is that, that Jabez was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and saw something that he should not have seen? Yeah, um, yeah that's the uh, rumors. You know, we, it's so many rumors out there. It is, and that's what one of the rumors is. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Jerrica, uh, so here's your opportunity. Uh, you, you know the, the family, you've met them through this. If there's anybody out there right now who knows of anything, what would you say? I would just say, please just say something. You know, everybody's always saying, oh, I'm scared. I don't want to get caught up. You can do it anonymous, anonymously and nobody will ever know. You know, somebody knows and it's a child, it's a 14 year old child, it's a baby. And somebody knows what happened to this child. And somebody needs to say something now. Please, it's been too long. It's been, way, it's been over two months. This family just at least wants to bring him home at least. Like, you don't even have to say what, ha just at least say where he is, you know, at least so we could just, like, they're losing hope. Bill, uh, w investigations like this, how long do you basically have to find leads before the, the it, it, the odds become a lot tougher in terms of, of finding the answers. In, in cases I've seen over the years, it really depends. Some people have been found a couple years later, you know, some not. So there's no real exact timeline for this. You don't know. You have to keep looking. You have to keep calling. Call Crime Stoppers. They need a name. They need, to, they need some clues here. Do you think that, um, and we don't know where, where the police are at in terms of this, but th they, are, they are developing a picture that they believe they, they know generally what, what the tale is, but they have to dot all the I's and cross the T's? Of course. They have to have hard evidence. They don't go on rumors. They have to have their name. They have to uh, do some questioning. They want to find a weapon. Yeah, they need the hard evidence. Okay, we have to take a quick break, but we'll be back for final thoughts in just a moment. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And folks, you, if you're looking down at your screen, you see that there are a number of uh, telephone numbers that you could call there for Crime Stoppers or the Sarasota Police Department. If you know anything, then definitely say something. Jerrica, let me start with you because you are the family's uh, choice in terms of being on this broadcast tonight to, to deliver a message to the folks in Newtown, the folks in Sarasota, the Suncoast, anybody who may know anything, what would that be? That would be to open your mouths and say something, please. Just know that this is a 14-year-old boy and they want to at least know the community they raised him in, care and love, love him, 
and actually care that there's a child that's been missing. So they want you to say something, speak up. You know, we have a voice, we have to use it, and we just got to bring him home. And that's all they want is for him to come home. You know, of course they care about what happened, but at the end of the day, as long as he's back and they can, you know, and there's two victims in this as well. So keep in mind, there's not just one, there's another victim in this. So if you don't bring this man off the streets, he will continue and get him off. Wayne, what's your next step? Um, our next step, we're going to have another um, uh, another search, but we do want to bring Jabez home. We want to give Tawana and her family that closure and community. It's up to us. We got to bring unity in the community, and the time is up. Let's come together. Are you going to do another physical search? Yes, sir. When? We're going to do another physical search this Sunday um, before the Thanksgiving holiday. We want to uh, get another search in this Sunday. We're going to meet up at Newtown Estates, 1030 a.m., and uh, we're going to have a map out of where we're going to search at and we're going to just continue. Uh, Bill, you are the experienced investigator here. What should the public know? What should they be looking for as we speak? All right. The, the Sarasota Police Department and the FBI are working hard on this case to find your best, but they need help. They need somebody. It's simple. Just pick up the phone, call Crime Stoppers for the $25,000 reward. Get involved. Help, help, help this family out. Uh, we, we have the Sarasota police that are working on this along with help from the FBI. Um, is this generally has it, how it goes? I mean, are there other law enforcement agencies that would get involved here? From what you see, um, is the outreach between law enforcement and the community what it should be? Are they getting the cooperation? Right now? Yes. No. It's the problem's the community. That's the problem here. They're not enough, like he said, there's not enough people out there helping with these searches. Wayne, I mean, it, it, the, the community, it, it, is it time for the community to step up here? Yes, sir, it's been time, but this is definitely time. Uh, this can be their child coming up. This child missed so many holidays, Thanksgiving coming, Christmas. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And remember, for updates on national and local breaking news, you can download the latest updated version of our app. Android users will get that update automatically, but iPhone users need to go to the App Store and re-download the app. Just search for WWSB or my Sunkos. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Jerrica Sutton is a family friend. Wayne Washington has tirelessly led the frustrating effort to search for Jabez and private investigator Bill Warner who is keeping track and will continue to keep track of all the leads out there.